walking on the Laura Secord Trail at the Q House in Thorold, Ontario. This is in the Niagara region. It's really pretty. This trail reminds me of the trails we had uh, in Sault Ste. Marie when I was uh, younger and we would go to the Hiawatha trails and walk and they were very narrow <laughs> dirt trails, nothing paved. It was nice and you're right in the woods or in the bush <laughs> as we would say up north. So, and, and we just had our Thanksgiving here in Canada and uh, the weather however is like summer. Just have a short sleeve on and I'm hot. A <laughs> uh, little bit of mud. <laughs> Gotta watch out for that. Oh, it's lovely. The, the leaves are starting to change. Not nearly as pretty as they are in northern Ontario where they turn really, really red. These ones are yellow, orange, gold, some brown. I'm not really a plant person. I can't identify any of these plants. I saw some berries a while back. Some some uh, blue, dark, 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 uh, purple colored, almost black. I don't know what they were. They were very plump. <laughs> of course, the Niagara region has uh, known for being a wonderful fruit and uh, produce farming with all the grapes and plums and apples, pears, peaches even. You think of peaches as being from Georgia, but we get really, really sweet, juicy peaches here in Niagara. Yeah, it's very sun. Oh, here's some more, more of those berries. Can you see them? I'm totally not going to try those, but what if I squeeze one? Yeah, it's like the consistency of a grape. doesn't smell too much. Right now I'm going to have stained fingers. <laughs> I bought some grapes this past summer, local grapes, like those big blue purple grapes. Oh, they were so good. I was lucky I got one batch that didn't have seeds in it. Oh, they were amazing and they were plump and none of them had been squashed in the bucket. <laughs> we got some mud here and a little stray piece of fruit must have fallen off of a tree. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. <laughs> we see a lot of those here. There's, a, there's quite a few of them on the, on the ground. I wonder where the tree, where that is. I don't know. Anyhow, there's, oh, there's some more mud. <laughs> I gotta watch out for this mud. I figured it would be smart to put on my shoes that had uh, good good grips on them, but <laughs> I wasn't thinking about mud. <laughs> Got my little shoes are my my grandmother's. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, ah, oh, here's some pretty leaves. Look at these. Nice. They're like flames. And. Uh, just through there, you can't really see it, but literally, I can see it. <laughs> right through there is uh, there's a river. Gibson River, or is it Lake? Shoot, I should know these things. <laughs> Gibson something, it's very, very beautiful. And the DeCue House is back here. This is a historic site. <sighs> All right, so we're using, we're using a Tuesday afternoon to get some much needed uh, fresh air and nature. Been working very hard on it. Oh, there's some more of those berries. My goodness. Woo! Could probably make some jam with, with those. They're high enough. High up enough that they wouldn't have been nibbled by <laughs> unwanted critters. But uh, yeah, I've been keeping very, very busy lately with some projects. Things are starting to to open up again. I mean, relatively speaking. Oh, wonder what's through there. <laughs> I think I'm going to continue on. All right, I see some people coming, so maybe I'll turn this off. <laughs>
Oh, hang on before I turn it off. Look at these. They look like little tomatoes. <laughs> okay, I turn it off now. There are people coming. <laughs> All right, so I'm back here. You can see the lake. <laughs> Very still. There are some seagulls on it. I also see this nice little trail sign marking the Laura Secord Trail. Kind of like the picture on the Laura Secord chocolates. <laughs> yeah, very maple-y looking. Definitely very Canadian. Ah, well, I'll put the camera on this side for a change. You're coming for a walk with me. <laughs> it's a hat day. I need a I need a haircut very badly. I have to give a presentation tomorrow. I'm very excited about this. It's an online talk that I'm giving. As you know, I like stories about piano players from long ago. And I'm always digging through books and journals and magazines and interviews and autobiographies and things. Sometimes even narrating them. And I got umpteen notebooks where I scribble down these rare and amusing stories when I find them. So uh, with things being online, I thought, well, I'm going to create a, an evening of stories. <laughs> so literally, Piano Stories with Penny is my event. Uh, I don't know, if you're watching this on YouTube, then I've probably already given the talk. <laughs> um, but anyhow, I debut that tomorrow online for the Niagara Falls Public Library. And if you're seeing this video before October, what is it, 13th, <laughs> you, you can still register. But uh, I'm hoping to get some more bookings of that, you know, before the pandemic. I used to give presentations in person, and I would talk about the pianists of the golden age, you know, late 19th, early 20th century. And I had pictures and recordings and things, but... COVID put an end to that. So I kind of recreated, or, ooh, these are some pretty leaves. Let's turn the camera around. Nice little glimpse of some red leaves there. Yeah, so I came up with this uh, other program that, that's just stories. It'd be nice to share recordings <coughs> as well for the audience, but you know, sometimes people forget to turn off their mic or they have audio issues and there are glitches and I don't want a nice presentation to get derailed <laughs> by that. So we're just sticking to the stories. My goodness. Okay, clearly we're not in the woods anymore. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden it's like Saskatchewan. Oh, it's, I've, been, I've been to the DeCue house many times, but I've never actually walk these trails. So, uh, well, it says no trespassing. Okay, well, I guess that, <laughs> that solves that question. Huh, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, anyway, got a nice view of the, the water. Beautiful day. I guess we'll, we'll head back down this trail here. I never would have thought I'd be putting this kind of content on my YouTube channel. You know, before the pandemic, my YouTube channel was just occasionally a place to drop some recital performances. But um, the pandemic is, uh, I don't know, changed a lot of things. So having fun, having fun coming up with content. It's a little fun side project. You don't get to perform in person. Although I do have, uh, I do have some things coming up that are in person. So I'm excited about that. And if you're, if you want to learn more, you can just go over to my website and under the schedule, you can have a look. Um, PennyJohnsonPiano.com. That's my website. Uh, but yes, it's good to be out and about a little bit more. I still haven't seen. Uh, any family or you know close friends are, are all far away so really 
on my own <laughs> every single day. But good thing I enjoy my company. <laughs> I have my stuffed animals. <laughs> I have Mr. B or Bach, <laughs> but I like to call him Mr. B. Yeah. I only moved here to St. Catharines right before the pandemic. <laughs> that was good timing. <laughs> I hate to be moving during the pandemic. Oh, goodness. But it's very lovely here. Very pretty. Things really grow. St. Catherine is known as the Garden City. And I do not, as you can see, I do not have a green thumb. <laughs> but even with my just watering things, my goodness, flowers in my, in my yard have just <laughs> explode. <laughs> and all the like, roses and what else? Big pink mallow kinds of flowers. Um, hibiscus, there's a lot of those here. And of course the fruit trees. <laughs> I had bought some of those grapes I was telling you about, but they had, one batch had way too many seeds and they were big and hard and horrible, but <laughs> They, they were just grown down the street here, so I thought, well, maybe if I save some of these seeds, I can, oh, I can, I can grow some grapes. <laughs> I planted them in the backyard, but look at these. Aren't these pretty? I wonder what those are. Those are much more blue than the ones I just saw. I'm going to, I'm going to, oops, <laughs> I'm going to pick one here. This looks like a blueberry. I'm not tasting it, don't worry. It's the juice is pink. <laughs> My teeth, I've got such big spaces. <laughs> uh, Alright, I'm I'm squishing it a little bit. I'm going to smell. It has oh my goodness me. There's a crap ton of them. <laughs> wow! Wow, wow, wow. I think these are, I think these are actual grapes. Like I'm, see? Like, maybe there is a chance that, that they will grow in my backyard. <laughs> now it looks like I've been bloodied. <laughs> uh, uh, I should really be practicing, you know. But I've been at my desk forever and a day between, between desk and office work and chores I'm trying to fit in practicing it's very hard to get out into the nature oh that was very sticky <laughs> we won't be touching the phone with that hand oh this is nice there's that flaming tree again yeah I'm surprised the battery is lasting this long hmm. well, there's a nice big patch of mud <laughs> ah, this is nice. Very nice. I think if Glenn Gould were alive, he'd be into this. There's nobody here. I see. A, I saw a few people. The trail is narrow, so it's a little bit a bit nervous when <laughs> people approach. A little bit of a germ germaphobe. <laughs> COVID did a number on that. <laughs> Not that I had COVID, but just masking and all of this is when you're already a little bit uptight about cleanliness. A pandemic doesn't <laughs> doesn't really help. Uh, but I'm very healthy. I've managed to, I didn't even get a cold. <laughs> I guess a lot of people are like that with all the isolation. <laughs> you don't go out. <laughs> so it's a little easier to stay healthy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there's some birds in there. I hope that's all I'm going to see here. There's a few squirrels. Oh. They're yappy. I don't, I'm not seeing any of the birds, just hearing them. They look like black. They're very black. <laughs> reminds me of the, when I think of blackbirds, it reminds me of the story in the 
uh, Leschetizky as I knew him, this book by Ethel Newcomb, published in 1921. Um, I narrated it, um, narrated this book on my podcast, which is called From Stage to Page. That was a pandemic project. <laughs> kind of been neglecting it lately, now that gigs are coming up. Um, but I'll get back to it. Anyhow, there's a story in this book. <laughs> she talks about uh, Leschetizky, a, you know, a very famous piano teacher from the late 19th century. And all these people would come to him from afar, wanting to study with this famous man. And uh, there were these three ladies that, are, that came into his room and were waiting, waiting to see him. <laughs> and, uh, and they were dressed in black, solemn as crows, <laughs> is what the book says. <laughs> and these ladies, uh, Leschetizky, they, they didn't say anything. And Leschetizky um, points to them and says, Auf! So they get up. And then he points at the piano and he says, Spiel, the German for play, Spiel. So one of them walks over to the piano, starts to play. And then <laughs> the Shetitsky points to the door, Vic. <laughs> so with three words, they were, they were greeted, heard, and dismissed. <laughs> so they, they were never to be seen again. Here's some more berries, but these berries, look at, they're growing on leafless branches. These ones are, I don't know if I should be touching all these things. These ones, well, these are hard. Maybe dead fruit on a dead tree. I don't know, partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> uh, my fingers are really sticky here from that. It must have been a grape. But the grapes that I bought had such a distinctive grape smell like Welch's, like grape pop, <laughs> actually, I love grape pop. <laughs> no, here they are again. Yeah. decided to turn this back on because we got the water right by the trail here and it's awfully pretty. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> Don't take your eye off the trail otherwise down you go. <laughs> mm. Yeah this is very much like northern Ontario here. Ah nice. Somewhere, oh, here's the tree with a bunch of, I guess, mushrooms or fungi, fungus growing on it. Look at this. All the way up. Well, part way. Most of the way up. It's kind of tough. <laughs> We got our trail markings here. White, <laughs> there it is, <laughs> white paint. Mm. Oh, jeez, <laughs> bad, <laughs> it'd be bad if I fell. <laughs> yes, that would be bad. Then we wouldn't be able to do 
some of the things we have coming up. <laughs> People are very friendly on the trail, for the most part. For the most part. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's nice. This place is not too far from my home. It's just a 12 minute drive or so on the 406 which is not a very stressful highway to be on, not like the 401 QEW, some of the ones that go into Toronto. Oh, this is nice. I wonder if a, if a beaver has been chewing up at that tree. Amazing it hasn't went down. Hmm. Be fun to have a paddle boat. <laughs> go on the water, or a little canoe, Ooh. stuff falling from the, from the sky, little paddle boat, that would be nice, you could have a little, little lunch, you could have some chips, <laughs> some pop, that would be good, barbecue chips, and great pop, <laughs> that sounds good, Ooh. birds, Mm. All right. Well, I might as well just keep this on because we're coming up to the end of the trail and I might as well show you the Deque House. Which is from the 19th century. And a historic site from the War of 1812. Canada and the U.S. having it out. And Laura Secord, young girl, was an important role. Played an important role. Here's the, here's the sign again. Laura Secord, Legacy Trail. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Okay, here it is. On this way. <laughs> There's so many mushrooms in the Niagara region. Weird shaped. Enormous mushrooms. Yeah. So it's right up it's right up here. Remnants. We'll walk up there. Feeling little, little pieces of <laughs> just little bit. You don't want to hurt it, but <laughs> little bits of bark. <laughs> we get a lot of squirrels here, mostly gray squirrels. The northern Ontario. Oh, here's a, it's a little, a little pine cone. <laughs> so cute. Hello, hello. Oh, I better watch out because. Great, after I, and I had just found a little moist towelette <laughs> to wipe the berry off of my hand. Now I got tree sap, which is worse. <laughs> oh, the joys of nature. I really like being in nature, but I don't like getting dirty. <laughs> I don't like getting bit. I was cutting my grass the other day, and the bugs were so bad, I must have had about 10 bites, and I was really itchy and nasty and sweaty, but then the next day, <laughs> the itching just like went away, 
All right, so here we are. My mom and I came here last summer, shortly after I had just moved here. Oh, whoops, I forgot. <laughs> this, is, this is what I want to show you, the flags. Colonialism so, has left some some scars for a lot of folks. We're all coming to grips with so many elements of history that have been normalized for so long. The Q House, 1912 to 1950. This house of Captain Don John De Q was the headquarters of the British outpost under Lieutenant James Fitzgibbon to which came Laura Secord through the woods and swamps below the Niagara Escarpment from Queenston on June 24, 1813 to warn of the American advance. Thus warned the small British force with its Indian allies captured by bold strategy at Beaver Dams, the entire force with its commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel John Burstler. That action, the eighth in the Beach Woods, was a turning point of the war. I'm not going to read it all, but ah, this plaque. Part of the ceremony declaring this house an historical site in 1953 contains in the fourth line of the text an inadvertent error in the date of Laura Secord's heroic trek. The corrected date is June 22, 1813, and the Battle of Beaverdams was fought June 24, 1833. So. Laura Secord came through the woods and swamps to warn that the Americans were coming. And this was the house of John de Cube. Whoops! There's another sign. Oh boy, this gimbal is not not cooperating. There we go. 1812. It's got a two fireplaces. like getting cozy by the fire <laughs> yeah so you know in the parking lot is back there I came at a good time it's like nobody here good. I've been saying there were these little fruits I guess they're pears or maybe some sort of a plum I don't know they're all over the ground and I just kicked a few into a little little pile there. <laughs> Pretty hard. <laughs> They're all over the ground. Well, those squirrels have a heyday with those. I turned it back on because there's a monument over here. That we should check out. Well, the trail was down there. Okay, so just walk on over some more here, parking lot. I don't know if any of you uh, have named your car. I have. <laughs> and his name is Saint Aubert. It was a character. I'll just show you the front of him. There he is, Saint Aubert. Bruce Trail. Saint Aubert was a, a character in in the Ad Anne Radcliffe book, The Mysteries of the Udolpho. <laughs> and I thought that Saint Aubert, this character, was just so caring and gentle. He was the father of the young girl in the story and he dies. But I call I call my car Saint Aubert, the little gentleman. <laughs> he gets me where I need to go. In comfort and style. Okay, so this is the First Nations peace monument here. Let's be respectful and enter this.
been a difficult year here in Canada with the discovery of children, unnamed children, buried in the residential schools. So we're remembering all those who never had proper proper opportunities to grow and to be respected for who they were and for their wonderful culture. This tree, this has grown. I was here last year. Wow. And then looking at this monument from the other side. Back up here. Let's see what it has to say. This monument is currently incomplete but will soon be finished. Taking our time to source appropriate components. For more information on the First Nations Peace Monument, please visit friendsofnorthseacord.com. Okay. Well, my little tour of the Deque House and the Lower Seacord Trail and the First Nations Peace Monument. Now, I'm going to close this little video and wish you all well, happy fall, and stay safe. Hi, Sunny Joe Bear.